Earlier this month, Toyota canceled the Avalon. Now they're reforming the assembly line for the Avalon into something futuristic. Over at the Toyota newsroom, Toyota to assemble fuel cell modules at Kentucky plant in 2023. And if you want to know a little bit about Kentucky, this is the largest manufacturing facility in the world for Toyota, not just here in the United States, but in the world. It started in 1986. They've made a lot of different vehicles there. Uh, the Camry, of course, is the biggest volume seller there. RAV4 Hybrid sells a ton. Uh, Avalon, rest in peace. Lexus ES uh, has been built there since 2016, and they have built the Sienna, the Solara. I always love the Solara, you know, front wheel drive V6 burnout machine and a coupe. Anyways, those are really they're almost like sleepers. No one would ever expect a Solara or a Solara convertible, right? They made some of those, too. And then the old old Venza uh, was produced there as well. Uh, so going back to this article, it could be it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be produced on the same manufacturing area or line as uh, the Avalon. But I just think it's funny that uh, Avalon announcement that it's canceled earlier this month and later this month. They're building fuel cells by 2023. So it seems like they're retooling, uh, repurposing maybe some employees, but repurposing some machinery as well to make way for fuel cells. What is going on in, in detail, though? Now, I love fuel cell technology in, in theory. The problem is the infrastructure is not there, and we just don't have a greenway produce hydrogen quite yet in mass quantities. Ideally, we would get it from solar, wind, uh, and water, but the problem is the best way to get hydrogen right now is from fossil fuels. And if we're going to have a greener, better environment, we need to produce hydrogen from more sustainable sources. But hey, if there are fuel cell electric trucks out there, you better believe that research and development for producing hydrogen is going to uh, definitely ramp up. Starting in 2023, a dedicated line at TMMK will begin assembling integrated dual fuel cell modules destined for use in hydrogen-powered heavy-duty commercial trucks. Uh, the fuel cell modules bring Toyota's electrification strategy further into focus that will allow truck manufacturers to incorporate emissions-free fuel cell electric technology into existing platforms with the technical support of Toyota under the hood. So how I read this is that Toyota wants to sell these to other manufacturers. Toyota going to be a supplier in this situation for fuel cell modules to international, uh, Volvo, etc. Heavy duty truck manufacturers will be able to buy a fully integrated and validated fuel cell electric drive system, allowing them to offer their customers admissions free option in the class eight heavy duty segment. Well, there you go. I just had to read a little bit further. So these dual fuel cell modules, which are the key component of an overall fuel cell kit, weigh approximately 1,400 pounds and can deliver up to 160 kilowatts of continuous power. 160 kilowatts is a little over 200 horsepower. Now that's just the amount of po continuous power that it's producing. How Toyota's fuel cells work is that they uh, charge a battery and then the battery is the, I guess, mediator between the electric motors and the fuel cell. So here we go. The fuel cell kit also uh, includes a high voltage battery, like I just mentioned, electric motors, transmission, and hydrogen storage assembly from top tier suppliers. So Gosh, all you have to do is put a shell on it at that point and, and the brand's emblem. Now we got some more details here. It delivers over 300 miles of range at full load weight of 80,000 pounds. Now I know nothing about trucking, so I just looked this up. A fully loaded tractor trailer typically weighs about 80,000 pounds. So Toyota's using the average metric here for trailer weight to get their 300 miles. Uh, an empty trailer is about 35,000 pounds. So uh, imagine what kind of range you would get uh, on an empty trailer. But what's the whole point, right? They got they got to give you numbers on a full trailer. So now if you want to learn more about this technology, it will be shown at the 2021 Advanced Clean Transportation Expo in Long Beach, August 31st to, to September 1st. So it's just a couple days away, uh, about four or five days away uh, from me filming this video that you'll be able to see this technology on display. So what do you guys think about that? Do you think it's coincidence that the Avalon's canceled earlier in the month and then later in the month they announced 
uh, that they're gearing up for fuel cell production in this Kentucky plant. I don't think it's I don't think it's a coincidence at it by any means. Uh, but uh, it will be interesting to see if Toyota can make money from this. I mean, t- fuel cell makes so much sense. Boats, uh, maybe planes, trains, as well as large cargo freight, uh, tr- big trucks, big trucks. <laughs> so it makes a lot of sense. We just need the infrastructure and a clean way to make hydrogen. And then it's all rainbows and clean air, right? But we still have a lot of hurdles to tackle with hydrogen and fuel cells. But before I let you go, I wanted to share this. Toyota marks 50 millionth Corolla sold. That's a number that's hard to wrap my head around. They're claiming it's the world's best-selling model. That's, I mean, that's probably true. I can't think of any other vehicle that's been around quite this long and has sold as many. I mean, obviously the Civic comes to mind. Okay, here we go. So the Civic has only sold 20 million vehicles as of June of 2021. So the Corolla's doubled plus the total sales of the Civic. Currently have the 12th generation Corolla and it's been in production over 55 years. So the Corolla arrived in America in 1968, starting at $1,700. Gas just cost 35 cents a gallon back then and the medium household income was $7,700. Some of the songs that were popular when the first Corolla came out uh, Otis Redding's Sitting on the Dock of the Bay, Simon and Garfunkel's Miss Robinson and the Beatles' Hey Jude, which I love all those songs. They're good songs. Corolla came out in a good year, right? Now, this is a huge write-up. They go through each generation of Corolla. I'll put it down in the comments for you. Uh, I reviewed the Corolla Hybrid uh, earlier this year, and I got over 60 miles per gallon on it. It was just insane. Uh, my grandma had had this Corolla, but it was like gold. Uh, it could have been this generation too. I was, I was a young kid. It was like, it was exotic in our family cause it was a Japanese car. Reviewed the Corolla hybrid, really enjoyed it. I would take it over the Prius because it is much more cost effective and you get about the same fuel economy. Also what's coming next for the Corolla is more than likely a GR Corolla three cylinder, 1.6 liter turbo, all wheel drive, six speed manual. This is like a wet dream for all Japanese car enthusiasts out there. It should be coming, probably announced by sometime by the end of 2022. Don't know when we would see availability on it, but that's what I'm looking forward the most from the new Corolla is a, well, Corolla Cross. Definitely stay tuned for the channel on that because I am going to Texas to drive it next week. So exciting times if uh, you're a Toyota Corolla fan. I used to own uh, the the Toyota Matrix, which was a modified Corolla like this Corolla Cross is. But I'm going to end it there. Smash a like button for the Corolla. Smash a like button for fuel cells, I guess, if you're excited for that. Subscribe for more Toyota news like this. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Peace out.